Welcome to UiPath Process Mining. My name is Rudolf Kuhn and I'm the Head Process Mining Ambassador. In my humble opinion, UiPath Process Mining is the most comprehensive and flexible process mining solution in the market. And while I work from home, I have decided to record a couple of videos to prove this. Today, let's talk about multi-dimensional process mining. Process mining always starts with data from backend systems. In these systems, the data we need is distributed across different applications. So the first step always is to connect with the data and to transform the data. The data transformation is the part where we build the event log we will use in our process mining platform. Once uploaded to the brain of process mining, the system will visualize the different processes, the social networks and all kinds of KPIs and statistics. One of the big features of UiPath process mining really is that the connection to the raw data, the data transformation and the visualization is part of the platform. If you are familiar with process mining, you know that there are certain attributes we need to visualize the process. And the mandatory attributes for process mining really are only the case ID, which is a unique identifier for a case, which can be, for example, a bis invoice number. The second is a timestamp telling us when something happened in the process. And the third one is the activity name telling us what actually happened. And based on these three attributes, the process mining software is capable of visualizing the entire end-to-end -end process. But in a typical event log, there will be other attributes as well. For example, the user who actually executed the activity. We will maybe find information about the team structure, so which team the user is part of. We will maybe see a country where the activity was executed, maybe also the system that was used to execute the activity, and there may be other attributes. So is this information useless or can we do something about it? Let's see. Well, let's have a look at our process. The process we are analyzing today is a very simple invoice approval process. We start with receive invoice. After some checks and approvals, we pay the invoice. This process we are see at the screen right now is the most common variation. Both of my sliders for activities, so the boxes and for edges, the connections in between are set to 0%. Now, when I increase my sliders, the system will show me the less common activities. So sometimes we first request some data, we check the contract conditions, and only then we do the final check of invoice. We also have another version of the process, let's call it the fast track, where we have only one step for everything, where, you know, for, for small invoices or trusted suppliers, so we simply only check and approve the invoice and we can pay. So for now, I would like to focus only on this part of the process. For that, I simply click on it, I approve my selection, and now we are looking only on the cases where this activity appears. And when we add our first edge, so the first exceptional connection, we see, oh, some cases actually has a loop, which is very unusual, so this shouldn't be there. What's going on? Let's find out. For that, I simply click on the path, and the system will now create a filter for all cases where this activity is repeated. And we see this happens actually very often in variation 25. So let's focus on variation 25 for now. I can remove my other filters because I only care about variation number 25. And again, we need to add all our edges and now we see the loop. And you know, the first thing we can do is actually to unroll the loop. So instead of looking only on one activity and loops, we can change the loop dev to two, and now we see checked and approved for the first time after four hours, which is perfectly fine. And the second checked and approved, which shouldn't be there after seven days, which is, you know, very weird. And I need to understand, you know, really where, where this problem comes from. But based on my activities, I can't see that. So the problem is something different. So what we need to do is to look at the process from a different perspective, you know, to, to look at the different dimension. And in UiPath process mining, this is very easy. From this drop down box, I can simply select another dimension, like for example, the country. And now we see the same process, our variant number 25, but now how it is executed or supported by our country organization. And we see that 
most likely the problem may be in the Netherlands. When we switch to team, we see, oh, operations marketing seems to be the bottleneck. Let me guess, they are based in the, in the Netherlands. And when we switch to user, well, we get a big picture. We can even add all our activities and let me maximize this one. Now we see the different instances of our bots running. We see the processing bots running in the system and we see a few people still being involved in the process. And we see that Kelsey Hoover, let me guess, she is part of operations marketing and based in the Netherlands, is maybe or has some issues with this process. You know, we can of course look at the details. So when we click on this little icon, the system will show us the 12 cases we have just selected within our variation 25. It's already sorted on throughput time. So when we click on the long lasting case, we see that everything in the beginning of the process was just perfectly fine. But the check and approve, the second check and approve only happened after 24 days. So now is the right time to ask Kelsey what the problem is and how we can help her. Visualizing the process in this way is very helpful, but it gets even better. So, you know, we can create a dashboard with all the different dimensions next to each other. So here we see the activities. Again, we add all edges, we see the loop. Here we see only the countries. Again, let's add all edges. Let's do the same for the, for the, for the teams. And well, the user network will be too complicated. So let's limit this to just a few cases or a few um, you know, boxes, activities, or users. And now we see everything in just one picture. Well, that was the power of UiPath process mining in multiple dimensions. I hope you have enjoyed the show and will come back for more highlights of UiPath. Thank you.